We're going to be doing some more on the interior today, dying a bit more on the driver's seat. Um, just uh, in, in the blog I did for this month, I was talking about how involved it is doing the videos. So uh, I've spent so far, I've spent about 35 to 45 minutes just trying to set up the camera angles, try and get better camera angles for you to try and show what's going on as well as possible because obviously the important thing is you guys want to see what's happening and what I'm doing so I'm just going to show you around <coughs> what I've spent the last 45 minutes doing now if you think about it in that 45 minutes I could have died the base of the seat been back indoors sitting down drinking coffee so I could have already done the job in the time I've just spent setting the cameras up so just going to show you around the cameras that I've set up so far and what I've been doing. Okay so apart from uh, the camera I'm already using which is actually my phone, I use my phone on a selfie stick quite a lot now. Um, over there on the far side we've got my main camera, my big Sony uh, Handycam on the tripod set up on that side of the car. I've also got the GoPro set up on the windscreen angled down onto the seat. Um, I did try putting it here then I realised that if I put it too far this way I'm probably going to block it when I'm actually dying the seat and you wouldn't be able to see anything apart from my back. I've also got my good old Sony um, sort of point and shoot camera which does video. This is a brilliant little camera actually. It is limited, unfortunately the battery life is only about 20 minutes, so I've got spare batteries but it means every 20 minutes you've got to swap the battery over which is a bit of a pain in the backside and you've got to watch it for turning itself off. What I'm going to do also, I think, is I'm going to set this up on a tripod, the, uh, my phone uh, on a tripod as well to try and get a close up on the seat. On top of getting the cameras all set up, uh, seat covers off base of the seat has been given another clean, there's my gloves, masking tape to tape up around the trim, uh, this bit of trim and this bit of trim, and of course the the die, which will give it a good shake, giving it a shake a couple of times. But it's not going to take that long to die the base of the seat. Um, I'll see how that goes, because again, I'm still the base of the seat obviously is a bigger step than doing that. Um, bolster that we did last time, doing the whole base of the seat. If that goes smoothly enough, then I might move straight on and, and die the, the whole back of the seat as well, so the driver's seat is done in one hit. But we'll see one step at a time, because still quite new to doing this sort of thing, so, and I don't want to push me luck, go too fast. Now, uh, the other things I mentioned, because I was colour blind, I've spoken to the powers that be, and that be Malcolm and Clive, and they said that, yeah, the, the slight difference in the die to the seats is it's a little more sort of a blue tint in the die than what the seats are. So what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to die the passenger seat as well. So I'm going to die the driver's seat, die the passenger seat, so that they're both dyed in the same colour. And then I shall start working on the driver's seat to get any of the little marks out. I'm happy with the passenger seat. I don't think that needs any like filler or work on it. But I'm going to work a little bit on the driver's seat. Then from there, hopefully we'll move on to starting on the rest of the trim bits that I've got. So, enough talking. Let's get on with doing it. Right, the cameras are all turned on. Cording, I don't need the gloves yet. And obviously I've now got this one set up so you can have a close-up of this. Um, and it's just really masking it up so, so that you don't get the dye onto the black sections. Now, I'm not going to do down the side here because obviously you've got all the centre console. I'll wait till the centre console is out to do that. Um, it's just really masking this up. Now the only thing with the cameras I've got to keep in mind while I'm working and doing this is I have to keep an eye on the 
Sony on the back there because as I say the battery's only got about 20 minute lifespan so you've got to watch for it turning itself off um, it's reasonably easy to tell because the lens thing shuts down and sort of folds itself in right, okay. okay I'm just going to concentrate on Trying to mask this, make a neat job of it. Okay. I mean, the dye is water based, so you should be able to clean it off of black plastic trim with a wet cloth reasonably easily as long as you're sort of don't leave it too long right there we go okay that's the masking up done right okay I'm gonna start on the inside I don't know which camera to look at now there's no point in looking at any of the other cameras because they're not on me they're all on the seat <laughs> Right, uh, so I'm going to start with the left hand, the inner panel, and then work out, because what I don't want to do is be leaning across wet dye and get that all over myself. So, here we go. Let's start having it. And it's going to be, again, as before, and I just need to put the dye down and hold the seat belt clasp out the way. So, just... Uh, as before the dye appears very thin when you put the first coat on um, but it wasn't really a problem with the backrest because the second coat sorry I'm not looking at you the second and third coats seem to cover quite well uh, here we go Now there's a couple of marks on that bolster that side, but they seem to, hopefully they will cover with the dye. Now, this is a bit that's um, worrying me, and it's not been a problem, is the perforations on the seat, but that's not, um, it's not blocking them up at all. In actual fact, the middle of the seat, where the perforated bits are, the dye seems to be going on to that better than it's going on to the to the sides. So that's quite nice. It actually, in general, I've got to watch it a bit down there. But generally, it seems to it seems to be quite sort of. Bit. I've got a bit mad with it there. Gonna try and get that out of there. But generally, it's reasonably easy to apply. Very, very similar just cleaning the seat. There. Right, now then I'm just going to go, that's starting to try and get some of that off of there, I want that panel because that is a little bit worrying that it's filling up some of the perforations on the front of it there but I don't know whether it's actually the dye I didn't really check whether it's the dye that's filling it up or whether the perforations were already sort of full of muck right now I've got to squeeze down the front here and just get round there I'm, now, I'm not happy with the front because uh, the 
dye seems quite thick there and it seems to be filling in the perforations. <coughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a dry pad and try and take some of the excess dye off of the front of it. Now that dye is almost dried actually already. Uh, I'm just going to get this dry pad. That has, look at that, that has dried already. Um, off of that. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, right. Put that pad down there somewhere. So the dye is drying pretty fast. Okay, so what we'll do then now is carry on with this side. Well, so what we're going to be able to do is by the time I've finished coating this bolster this side, I should be able to actually start. Sorry, I keep looking up at you. How's that? That better? We should be able to start going on to the second coat almost straight away. So that's quite handy. Okay, let's put the second coat on because this is pretty much dry. Now okay, here we go for coat two. Again, I've just got to turn myself around because I've got to hold the, uh, just hold the, um, because I've got a bit of a mark in the same place on this seat, where the seat belt goes, as I had on the passenger seat. Carefully, we don't overdo the die on this front edge again. As the die seems to take seems to be taken to the centre of the seat a lot better than it's taken to the bolsters. Don't really know why. Not put quite so much die on there. I think I mentioned last time that this guy, this, this guy has the sealer <coughs> mixed in with it, so you haven't got to put sealer on it after you've used it. A little bit, again, a little bit heavy there. You've got to be a little careful with this because when it goes on heavy, it does seem to be to some degree. Filling up the perforations. So, what we'll do, I'm just going to get the other pad and just wipe it off. So you, you just got to sort of um, be a little bit conscious of how much you're putting on the pad, depending on the area of the seat that you're doing. Sorry, I'm talking while I'm not looking at the camera again. But obviously, trying to um, also concentrate on what I'm doing. Bit. Um, it runs down into the 
creases, obviously. That's the second coat on, so we're just going to let that dry. That's taken a little longer to dry now than it the, did the first time round. So obviously, I guess because it's building up the amount of um, dye that's on there. So I'm going to leave that now to dry off a bit before I put the third coat on. Okay, that's had uh, around 15 minutes to dry off now. Uh, I'm going to put the last coat on. Um, I think also with the last coat, it's going to be a case of concentrating more on the areas that obviously you can still see the marks through. Because the bolster on my side, on the driver's side, looks quite good, but the bolster on the inside near the centre console you can still see the mark where the seat belt is and it's, there was a couple of marks on the bolster itself there was also a mark in the centre pad but that seems to have disappeared so maybe a case of more concentrating more on the inner bolster than on the the other two i will coat the other two i don't think around the front of the seat needs any more doing i think that's Perfectly fine now. So, um, on with the third coat. Tempted to use a new pad on it, but I think maybe not. Okay, so let's concentrate on this holster again. Put that down so I can get round. There, get that covered. There, I'm going to go a little heavier on the bolster this time. So I've got the marks I'm going to try and lose. I'm just going to go very lightly. A very, I'll put a very small amount of dye on the sponge. Sorry again, I'm not looking at you. I'll put a very small amount of dye on the sponge for the centre panel because the centre panel seems to have covered. So the centre panel really is more like uh, when you were conditioning the seat. Very, very little amount of dye, but really sort of rubbing it in well. And it's drying almost as fast as you're rubbing it in.
this bolster. And this doesn't look too bad. This one again, this third coat is very much like it is getting into the I'm gonna use that one. The, the dye does seem to be getting itself into the into the cracks quite a bit. That's I don't know what that's done there, that's marked that a bit. Using the I think using the dry pad has just literally pulled all the dye off there. So that wasn't a good move. There we go. So we'll just let that let that dry again. Yeah, using a dry pad to take off the excess doesn't really seem to be a good idea because it seems to kind of drag and tear the thing now I'm happy with the centre not happy with the two bolsters the camera up there has turned off I'm not worried about that we've got the go uh, not the GoPro we've got the the SJ4000 that we got my phone there so I'm not going to worry about changing the battery in that camera up there I'm going to let this dry, I'm going to put one more coat on just on each bolster, not the centre. So that'll be four coats gone onto the bolsters. Then I'm going to call it quits for the day. I'm not going to do the back, because obviously you've got to tilt it forwards and that to get to it. And I don't want to risk marking the die on the seat base. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put one more coat on each bolster. Then that is it. I will come back and do the backrest on another day when that's had plenty of time to dry completely. Right. <clears throat> okay, last couple of coats on to the bolster. Can't tell how much dye we've got left. There's another reason we're doing the back could run out of dye. And the beauty of this is you can re-dye the seats or re-dye part of the seats anytime you want. Anytime you get a mark on them. Actually, now I've got a bit more confident with doing it, it's quite therapeutic. This side. The main thing that concerns me down here is that piece down there. I 
that's wiping on wiping on quite nicely now. I think the SJ4000 has just closed down by the sound of it. No, that doesn't matter too much because we are done. We are done. Right, put the lid back on the bottle. So there's the uh, finished seat base, it's all dry now and I think it looks pretty damn good. Let's just try and do it. I'll try and give you a show over the whole See, I may, these marks here, I may sort of do them with a bit of filler. We'll see how it goes. And uh, take it from there, but there you go. Uh, yeah, um, I'm pleased with that. I hope you like the way it come out of it. Well, I've tried to show you the whole process, really, sort of doing it as I did it. So... We've worked from like doing small bits to doing a bolster to doing the whole base of the seat. What I'll do now is I'll, in a, in a day or two, I'll get the back of the seat done and then I'll get the passenger seat done so both the seats are fresh, new colour on them. Um, and then I'll move on to the other bits of the trim. And of course I'll bring you a video on doing those and using the filler. Um, so, as always... Thank you for watching. Um, I hope it wasn't too drawn out for you and it did give you a good idea of what it's really like to actually try and dye a leather seat. Um, so please subscribe, please share, please any comments, put them in the bottom in the boxes below. And as always, I will see you in the next video. So bye for now. <laughs>